Rosh Hashanah is a time when we're told that miraculous things happened to so many of our biblical figures. The Gemara in Rosh Hashanah says, the Rosh Hashanah nifkeda sara Rachel v'chana. This was the time when these three holy women of the, of the Tanakh, Sarah, Rachel, and Chana, were granted a judgment that they would have a child after years of childlessness. Rosh Hashanah Yotza Yosef mi Asurin. This is the time when Yosef was freed from prison after languishing in jail for years. Rosh Hashanah Batla Avoda Mi Avoseinu B'Mitzrayim. Rosh Hashanah is the time six months before we were finally redeemed from Egypt that we no longer had to act as slaves anymore. There was such upheaval within Egyptian society that slavery ended. What is it about this quality of Rosh Hashanah that creates these miracles? There's a very interesting pizmona poem that we recite in the Chazan's repetition to the Amida on the morning of Rosh Hashanah, the first day. It goes, it's very difficult language, so I'll just read it to you in English. The matriarch Sarah, who grew old righteously, just when she despaired of giving birth, just when she gave up hope, just when she resigned herself that she was never going to have a child, at this time of Rosh Hashanah, he who drew her forth from the womb remembered her on Rosh Hashanah. This was the moment, this was a pivotal moment in Sarah's life that she had resigned herself. I'm 90 years old, it's not happening. I still love Hashem, but it's not happening. And I think that if you look at all of the examples that are given by the Gemara, the miracle happened at a time when the individuals or the groups of people resign themselves. Redemption is not going to happen. The same thing happened with Yosef. Our sages tell us that he languished in prison an additional two years after he had asked the Sar Hamashkim, the wine steward, to remember him to Paro. Why did he have to languish an additional two years? The answer is Hashem wanted Yosef to come to a point where he would say, it ain't happening. That moment where you have Yehush, that moment when you've despaired or you've resigned yourself, boom, that's when the redemption takes place. The Jewish people, we know from the Torah, Vata'al shav asam elo elokim aku, anchu b'nei ha'avodah. The Jewish people sighed a sigh of despair. We're never getting out of here. At that moment is when the slavery comes to an end. That's the theme. The Shem Yishmuel tells us something very important. He says that when the Gemara in Sanhedrin tells us that Ein Bein David Ba Ad Yisyashu Min HaGeula The Messiah, Mashiach, is not going to come until we resign ourselves that it's not happening. We despair, we sort of basically give up that the redemption is happening. He says, that doesn't mean that we don't believe that Mashiach is ever coming. It means that we don't make our devotion to Hashem contingent upon Mashiach coming. It means that we've resigned ourselves, whether he comes in my lifetime, or my child's lifetime, or in a hundred lifetimes from now, I believe Mashiach will come, but if I am not affected positively by Mashiach's coming, that will not affect my relationship with Hashem. That's what Hashem is waiting for. You know, they say uh, many versions of the same story about the Baal Shem Tov, that he was told because of something that happened, he was given a heavenly message that he had lost his share in the world to come. He lost his chilek in Olam Haba. And the story goes that once the Baal Shem Tov heard that he lost his chilek in Olam Haba because of something he had done, or because he bartered his Olam Haba with a wealthy person for tzedakah, or whatever the story is, he had tremendous simcha, he had tremendous joy. He said, ah, oh, finally, I've come to a point in my life where I can serve God altruistically without having this albatross of thinking that I'm going to get Olam Haba for every mitzvah that I do. Now that I know that my Olam Haba is out of the way, I can really serve God the right way. And I think that when you think about all of the prayers that we're going to be gathering in Shul for over Rosh Hashanah, almost none of those tefillos that we say on Rosh Hashanah have to do with us. It's not about us, Hashem. It's all about coronating you. It's all about declaring you king. It's all, all about wishing for you, Hashem, that all of the things that you want for this world should come true. And that's really why Rosh Hashanah is an affirmation of our desire. We just want your will to be done. We want a closeness and a relationship with you, not because of the gratification 
or the reward that comes with it. We are resigned that even if nothing happens to us, we just want the new year to be a year of where your will is done. And I think it's especially true on Rosh Hashanah to have that altruistic approach, not only because it's the way Hashem says the highest form of avoda, the highest way of serving God is accomplished, but it's also an affirmation that God really runs the world and that the new year can bring with it a new creation. When we've resigned ourselves to our current reality, we can also at the same time contain the notion that next year is going to be up to God to create an entirely new world. Fine, I'm at a point in my life where, whether it's a shidduch that I was hoping to get, or whether it's a parnasa that I was hoping to get, or whether it's a certain medical condition that I was hoping to receive, it doesn't seem like it's happening. And I'm resigned to that, and I accept it, and I devote myself to you fully, Hashem, regardless of whether that's going to come or not. But I'm also mindful that as Rosh Hashanah, we turn that corner on the new year. It's a new creation, and even things that really are impossible to happen, when you create the world, you create it anew. The new year, 5778, is going to be a totally different creation from what it was in the previous year. So things that were impossible for this past year can be, can be real realities for the coming year. And if we have those two ideas in mind, and it's not about what I get out of the relationship, but rather what happens in your world, Hashem, and your will should be done. And also the realization that a new year brings with it new creation and new possibilities. I think we'll all have a ksiva v'chasim tov, and that's my blessing for you and your family. You should have a good gebenched year with tremendous blessing and hope for the future.